and good night and welcome to another show of Family Life, A Catholic Vision. We are so glad to be back. We are so glad to have you. And of course, on tonight's show, we have collaboration happening. And usually with our collaborations, we have Generation S. Now, when we hear Generation S, I know our audience already are thinking one person. And you are 100% correct. To, on tonight's show, we have Father Matthew Duro with us, and we have a very special guest, which I will soon introduce to you. But tonight's show, we're going to focus on an event that happened with Generation S um, late last year, and we have a lot of feedback, we have a lot of information sharing, and we have a great surprise with regards to the winners for this particular event. And I will not keep you any longer. It was the essay competition that was held by Generation S last year, where we had two winners. But I will not go into that. I will ask Father Matthew and our very special guest to give you more information on that. For tonight's show, along with Father Matthew, we have Dr. Roseanne Walker with us. And she will let you know her role and how she played an integral part in the essay competition. So welcome on the show tonight, guys. Great to be here. Great to be Hi. here. Hi, Dr. Roseanne how Walker. Are how are you? I'm fine, Lauren. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yes. So everybody, of course, knows, you know, whenever Generation S is around, we have the man himself. And we're also, you know, Dr. Roseanne is also part of Generation S as well. So let's get into tonight's show, yes? Mm -hmm. So we had the essay competition. Oh, wait, before I continue. Big era, Dr. Roseanne, can you please let us, get, can you share with us, you know, a little <laughs> background on who you are just, you know, to share with the audience? Okay, Lauren, well, I'll begin by saying I'm a practicing Catholic of the Santa Rosa Parish in Arima. I'm also a covenanted person of the lead Dominican movement in Trinidad and Tobago. Academically, and this is why I guess Father Matthew reached out to me to assist with the judging and moderating of this competition. I'm the coordinator for the literature specialization, primary and secondary, at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. I'm also the general administrator of the Valsine campus there. Okay, so that I was able to co-opt some colleagues from both the literature specialization and the reading specialization to combine their all practicing Catholics to come together for us to assist with this very important function of reading these essays and choosing, quote unquote, a winner. <laughs> and I'm very happy that you, you said yes, you gave your yes, sir. Yes, I gave uh, my yes. And you, you made an important statement that you're practicing Catholic. Very you important. know the faith. Yes. Um, Dr. Dr. Walker is someone that uh, seminarians throughout the throughout generations <laughs> and, and priests who have, have tremendous respect for. And I think bringing her intellectual expertise mm -hmm. and her love for the theater, I thought that she was the ideal person to lead uh, the judging panel for the Generation S essay competition. Yes. So thank, thank you, you once more for saying yes. Yeah, thank you, Father Matthew, for that privilege. Thank you, Dr. Yes. Walker, for saying yes. I, at Family Life Commission, she also plays a role as well, <laughs> and I know her for as long as I've been working there, sure. and people always speak so highly of you, so of course, oh. and I know you will always, you know, come out and give, your, give of your best. Thank you. So we had an essay competition, which I must admit took me by surprise when Father first came and told us, the committee, we're having an essay competition. <laughs> And I remember it was more consultative than that, eh, um, Lauren. <laughs> oh, I mean, it, it was is, a democratic it process. It was it consensual. Was. No, it's, the thing <laughs> is, he, he always wants the best for generation. That's yes. an everyone that he out there to serve, right? So we were like, as a competition, okay. Oh, wonder what happened there. Who gave? What happened with the ideas? How did that come to be? So I'm taking this opportunity. It was a two o'clock in the morning idea. Really? There's many, <laughs> many um, ideas that um, passed through my mind at two o'clock, three o'clock in the morning. You're not sleeping at that time? I am, I am up. Yeah, you're up. up, okay. You, you get the inspiration. You got the inspiration. You write it down and then you go back to sleep. Yes. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> All right. So besides the two o'clock in the morning inspiration, is there anything that contributed towards that thought of having an essay competition? And the topic that you choose, you chose? Okay, um, basically the whole thrust of Generation S is to get the conversation around the vocations mm -hmm. going. Um, in, many, 
in many ways, the conversation about vocations are sometimes very, very private between a young person and probably a spiritual director. Um, vocations have, over the years, been, uh, been something that people don't want to talk about. The topic of vocations, the, the thought of a vocation. And so we always say at Generation S, dare to be different, think and talk priesthood, religious life, and lay consecrated life. And we felt that going to the schools was, uh, was creating a platform for that thinking and talking vocations. Um, if we're talking about creating a culture of vocations to the priesthood and religious life and lay consecrated life, which is the mandate of the AEC, um, that in every diocese and archdiocese, there must be a culture of vocations. S things must happen at the level of the schools. Yeah. Not only the parish, not only youth ministry, um, but at, at the level of the schools, the level of confirmation classes. Mm -hmm. So we really are trying to, to collaborate with various departments of the archdiocese to think and talk vocation to the priesthood, religious life, and the consecrated life. And if I could, sorry, yeah. go ahead. If I could okay. add something there to yeah. support what Father Matthew is saying. I think young people also have to realize that the idea of a vocation is really not outside of how they're being prepared to be young adults. And this is why I liked the idea of the essay competition because it builds on what they're already getting in the formal education system mm -hmm. and allows them an avenue now to express and demonstrate that. And you know, that is one of the criteria we're really looking at because these are young people who are exposed to how to write, the writing process. And by now, if they were not told formally individually they would have realized that you know an essay is the result of a very thoughtful disciplined process i have to think about what i want to write you know i have to pull my ideas together i have to ensure that how what i want to express about the idea is very clear and coherent to my listeners and my readers you know so that i think it's a wonderful aspect a wonderful dimension that the church is tapping into because too often, and I can speak from my generation, come on, you know, <laughs> church was there, school was there, you know, so you're getting that marriage that is happening there right now. Yeah. And let's not forget catechesis. Mm -hmm. You know, these teenagers are all in some sort of confirmation class and some other type of group. And I guess the idea of getting them now to connect, what if God called me and to have these thoughts about God and to have to write about it I think it was a very wonderful, inspirational um, <laughs> um, idea. And uh, that I hope that the 49 young people who submitted these essays would have you know, gone a step further in understanding their own spiritual dimension yeah. and their own relationship with God through this exercise. One word that kept come to mind when um, Ros um, Dr. Rosen was speaking was integration. We really need to, to integrate um, God and spirituality and the mm -hmm. thought of a vocation into, into our school system. Um, there are political movements throughout the world mm -hmm. that want to kick God out mm -hmm. of school and out of education. Mm -hmm. um, from an ethical point of view, from the point of view of, of Catholic social ethics, we ought to, to include God, include mm -hmm. faith in education, mm -hmm. in law, in politics, basically, um, it's a sense that uh, we need uh, ethics and we need uh, um, religion-driven ethics mm -hmm. in all spheres of life. Yes. Um, but coming back to the whole idea of, of, of a vocation mm -hmm. and cultivating an openness to a vocation, um, what better place to do mm -hmm. it than a learning environment? Yes. Mm -hmm. um, we learn all sorts of things in school. All sorts of um, things. Why can't we learn about laying down one's life mm -hmm. in the service of the kingdom, in the service of the church? Yes. Okay, so thank you for sharing that. Those, for our viewers, um, the age group, I believe, was between 13 and 16 years old. Yes. And Roseanne mentioned it earlier. The topic was, what if God called me? Mm -hmm. And if you missed it, there were 49 submissions. <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, from all 
different areas of Trinidad. It was from different well, schools. Yeah, I would feel so. Yes? Yes. They didn't put yeah. where, what particular yeah. area they came from? No, when we got, when I got the submissions mm -hmm. as a moderator, mm -hmm. I did not have that kind of information. information. I didn't okay. want that. Okay, all didn't right. didn't want that. You want right. to make the process as fair as possible. All right. Because the panel of judges are all practicing Catholics from different parishes. Right. You know, so we didn't want that personal influence. Right. Mm -hmm. Remove the temptation. Oh, okay, <laughs> the bias. great. Okay, great. So that is one of the questions I had to ask you, Dr. Okay. Walker. Who exactly were the panel of judges and how were they selected? Right. Well, Father Matthew entrusted that selection to me. Yes. So, of course, I worked with, I decided to work in my environment. So I had Dr. Micheline Adams, who's an assistant professor also of literature at the University of Trinidad and Tobago. I had Miss Lynette Noel, who has a master's in reading and in um, literature. She's one of our colleagues also. Mr. Martin Jones, also a uh, master's in education, master's in literature. And we all work in the literature and right, reading right. and language mm -hmm. specialization mm -hmm. within the University of Trinidad and Tobago. So we are all working with young people, yes. pre-service teachers who are striving to complete their Bachelor of Education. We had an alternate, meaning someone who, when I realized that maybe selections were chosen by this one person and not by others, I gave it another eye to look at. And that is Mr. Tini Aberdeen, mm -hmm. who, yes, who also has her master's in English. She also has a master's in theology. Mm -hmm and is continuing her work in um, bioethics and theology. And um, that was it. That was and it. myself. And yourself. As the moderator. Yeah. All right? Okay. Yes. So it was an easy process. And if I can just go give you an idea. Sure, as I have it go on ahead. My Please share with iPad us. here. And this yes. is part of the report that I submitted Thank to um, Father Matthew. I told him five practicing Catholics comprise the panel, all being current teachers, teacher educators with formal tertiary level qualifications in the fields of language, literature, reading, and theology. The panel was guided by a chief judge moderator who set the criteria for the evaluation process and who helped to establish the first shortlist. So you see what I did when we got the 49, you know, I used my good old <laughs> teacher criteria. You read all first. To get a sense of how you will approach this marking process. So I just gave them all and said, you know, let's read and let's choose those who we feel, those who we feel have addressed the topic, what if God called me. Now some people shifted there. Eh? In fact, one person, one or two persons used the sub. There was a little um, cartoon-like thing on the poster. Where you had a young man and a woman oh, yes. imagining the, priest the, life and, yeah, and priest somebody with that as a title. Right, right. So we are conscious, especially from the literacy perspective. The criteria for the essay was properly listed on yes. the right side of the poster. Right. And the title of the essay was What <laughs> If God Called Me? Yes. Now, interestingly enough, the title as printed on the poster had this ellipsis at the end, dot, dot, dot. But several of the submissions, ignore that ellipsis and put their question mark. Oh, okay. What if God called me? <laughs> <laughs> so you're very particular. Well, you yes. look at every... Wow, okay. Yeah, Quite this, 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 is our panel, panel. this is our field. We engage in the assessment of writing all the time. Yes. And the essay is a specific type of writing. Yes. And not only that, because these are young people, we are saying we have to encourage them now to learn how to read criteria right. and respond appropriately. You know, you yes. can't just do what you want. Right. Some of the submissions definitely demonstrated that they realized that what they are getting in secondary school mm -hmm. relative to writing and writing essays must be brought in the process. So they had their title. Okay. And it was clear with an introduction, development, paragraphs, or conclusion. Oh, wow. Some did not do that. Some okay. just did their own. <laughs> <laughs> Some did their own thing, you know, and this is it. But these are young people, and this is why I am sure maybe coming out of this, we may have an opportunity to probably meet with um, the young those people who submitted yes. and do like a workshop with them or something of the sort, mm -hmm. coming out of their own writing. 
Um, you talked about it. Were there any challenges when you when is there any well any discrepancies or challenges that you discovered when you were going through the forty nine? Well, I think the main one, and I mentioned this to Father Matthew earlier in an earlier conversation, was voice. Okay. Now you learn about voice in academia when you're a student, and so that your voice has to be authentic. So if I'm writing as a sixteen year old, right. I could be a 16-year-old who is quite literate, which is exactly what I think the winner's piece showed. Very articulate, you know, knows something about the Bible. I was able to integrate that into the world. But there were some submissions that clearly, clearly were written by an adult. Okay. Or maybe I should correct that. Not written by an adult, but definitely an adult had some say in the final product. <laughs> right. And had some say in terms of the expression. Okay. Okay. When we reflect on our own lives between 13 and 16, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's a way, there's a way you talk, you know, there, there's just a way it's you express yourself. It's jargon that you use that it takes express no yourself. No strange, in, yes, well, when I said voice, for instance, you know, one person say, um, if, God, God, if God called me, huh? And, you know, a, an authentic replication, you would think, yeah. of how, a young person would, would speak, respond would to respond, that. Yes. But some were very preachy, if you want to call it that. Uh -huh, okay. You know, yes, took the high road, you know, and caught calling. And the, okay. Yes, <laughs> yes. You know, I don't mean to, <laughs> I don't mean to, you know, make a mockery of anything, but those that caught our attention that made the shortlist, which were 21 of them, mm -hmm. were very authentic in their expression and in their voice. Oh, that's very we knew good. this was a teenager, and this was a teenager working through this idea of what if God called me. Some use the submission to work through that process. Yes. Some, like the young, like the essay that won, won. Mm -hmm. obviously went through that and then decided, you know, let me craft my essay appropriately so the essay becomes a very interesting, interesting product. Read. More importantly, with that winning submission, the person used, well, I know it's a young man now. Mm -hmm. He used um, his experience of hearing his father respond to a call mm -hmm. about getting a promotion on the job mm -hmm. to really inform his own idea of what if God called me. Okay. So it was wonderful. You know, that is really high order thinking there. Yes. He was able to make a proper analogy yes okay and continue use what he knows use his own little impressions about god right. examples um pertinent examples i should say from the scriptures to talk about his own process okay and in the end it was just a very pleasurable read yes you know it, it was smooth it was coherent and it expressed ideas that the Catholic Church would support and recognize. And I think that, was, that is important. Yeah, so that would be part of the criteria. Yes. But, you know, we're talking about the winner, who the first place winner, but I just wanted to say from the submissions, it seems like, you know, I discussed it. Is there anything in particular um, that really stood out for you from the essays that, you know, really took you by surprise that you were... Uh, you know, you were just like, wow, like, this, the, her thought process or his thought process, you know, is there anything that, um, you know, took you by a joyous surprise, I should say? Yeah, well, apart from the winner, it was really, you know, um, enlightening and amazing, you know, to see young people seeing if they were called to be a nun, mm -hmm. highlighting teachers as their models highlighting nuns as their models for what they would like to be wow, and okay. if God called them some were very creative they saw themselves in heaven you know and yeah, well, <laughs> really, that's the idea. really good stuff yes oh, Father, and, how do you um, feel about that? diamond something like, <laughs> but how do you feel about you know young people writing like this how does that make you feel I think hopeful hopeful that um, that young people are still willing to model mm -hmm. um, priests and religious and, and people who are service oriented for the kingdom of God. Um, I think there is, is, is a matter of, of reaching young people and, and hearing what's in their hearts. 
um, what's in the heart of a young person, what's in the heart of a young Catholic, mm -hmm. and how we could uh, ignite their religious imagination. Because that's one of the goals and aims of Generation S, to ignite the religious imagination. All of us have an imagination. Mm -hmm. um, imagination uh, is, um, is, is a gift to humanity. Mm -hmm. um, the, the internet was a thought. A car was a thought. Mm -hmm. A microwave was a thought. All innovation and technology were once thoughts. They were once ideas. And they were once part of someone's imagination. Mm -hmm. um, and we must be able to dream a dream. A church must be able to dream a different world. And young people must be able to dream that they are part of a different world, a better world, a world in which God is the center of, of, of that world and God's values are the center of that world. And so if we can get young people to, to use their imagination and to use their imagination of a tool for spirituality and a tool for their religious development, that would be that would be revolutionary. Well, that's what they did in the essay yes. competition. Yes. You know, I think all of what all your great intentions mm -hmm. for this essay competition have been made into a reality by the submissions that were given to us. I think what I'm hearing, I'm, you know, it's lo it's refreshing to see young people, you know, write and write from a place where it is you never thought they would have because they're so distracted by technology and what's happening, peer pressure and all these different things that they could actually transcend mm -hmm. and reflect upon something other than, you know, just what's happening, what's the latest thing happening. You know, it's important for young people to understand that there is a bigger world out there. Yeah, you know, and it. not everything that's happening on social media and, you know, okay, yes, your parents might be saying, what if you become a, a doctor or, yeah. you know, a journalist or something like that? That's not a be all and end all. Right. You know, you have a call, what if it's to the priesthood, religious life, or lay consecrated? And Generation S is here to ignite your imagination. And I always <laughs> like when Father brings that up because I think that really, that, should, that really is something that Generation is. We're here to you know, challenge you. Mm -hmm. We're here to provide or um, host events that really allow you to be yourself, especially young people to, you know, worship and to communicate and network with other young people such as yourself that might be getting a call. But Generation S is here to basically tell you that it's okay mm -hmm. if you get the call. You know, priesthood and religious life and lay consecrated is not, I get up in the morning and I pray every day. I get <laughs> up in the morning and I work, I have meetings, I meet with people, I have lunch with friends. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's a normal person's lifestyle, yeah, correct. Yeah. you know, and I think Generation S, with a lot of the different events that we have, I think we really are beginning to accomplish winning over the hearts of the young people. Well, so, I, go ahead, I yeah. I want to add something there, though, and it's, it's something that Generation S may want to consider. You see, one of the lacuna that came up to me mm -hmm. in looking at these essays is, what do we have? in terms of publications mm -hmm. that would allow young people to see how this idea of if God calls me is ex what if God called me is expressed. Mm -hmm. So what came up to me very clearly is the lack of publication of children's literature, let's say within the Catholic system. Yeah. To help to spur this because in a way we ask these these young people to submit this in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. Yes, there are books in the bookshops about martyrs and saints and, you know, will give you certain things about life. I don't know the extent to which they read those books, and those books are normally written in kind of chronological biography. Mm -hmm. To get the more metaphorical type, they would have to be led to that. Right. They would have, the book would have to be used in the confirmation class or in parish sessions or something to show how, you know, a life could be made meaningful other than I was born here, I did and this, that, and, and I ended the there. Yeah. So I think that this essay competition, as a moderator, what I began to see was we are in our system. We do not really have the support yes. for this type of writing and thinking. And maybe Generation S yes. could think mm -hmm. about initiating something making a publication out of this <laughs> first no, submission yes. so that other young people have an opportunity to read 
well, you know, and it not costing you, and it makes a larger plea now for what are we doing about children's literature generally. Right, when it you comes know? to this particular aspect. Comes, because as a young person, you need a type of writing that will stimulate you, yes. that, you know, to think in certain ways, to open up avenues. So yes, we have a whole host of publications, and I'm not speaking here just about, um, what's the popular one there? Mr. Hobbit and Ingham. Um, oh, <laughs> I don't know if it's But um, it's out of my mind yes. now. Yes. No, but I mean, Father Matthew, with um, Dr. Rosan saying that, you know, with, if we have this every year, the essay competition, say we decide to have this every year, then the, all the collections that we have, we could eventually have, you know, a book, you know, or something. If we have it every year, maybe we could think about something and like that. And include it in the, in the catechetical and in, program. Exactly, um, yeah. To, to sort of... A, Collaborate with um, with uh, the Archdiocese and Catechetical Office right. yes. with respect to um, um, using using the essays as as uh, um, conversation pieces mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. the in the in the module mm -hmm. um, on 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 sacred orders right. or the sacrament mm -hmm. of, of, of holy orders mm -hmm. okay. um, because they, they're supposed to have um, a module in the confirmation program that deals with uh, um, priesthood and religious life and the lay consecrated life. So I want to thank you for, for, yes, for, for that a, idea. That's a great idea. That was not thank a, you a, so a much. Uh, that was it. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much for that. Uh -huh. So, you know, out of the show, we're getting great ideas. And but one other thing, go is, ahead, yes. and I mentioned this to Father Matthew mm -hmm. previously too, is how some young, young people think about sin. Yeah. And see themselves as sinful, and I mean, I was like, ah. Oh, so that was a surprising thing. <laughs> that to was you? that was one of the most surprising. Things to be like, okay, <laughs> you know, um, and I wondered where it was coming from because you know, between thirteen to sixteen, okay, so in confirmation class, you hear mm -hmm. about sin, but I was not, I'm not convinced that at that age group you take onto yourself and you internalize this idea of yourself as this deep sinner. Yep. Now, I don't know, in my understanding of the Catholic theology is not that we're supposed to... <laughs> we, we, we are people of, of God's well, love, of love and life. Yeah, can you, I mean, Take can on you this that? whole uh -huh. sinful yeah. character. And um, so one or two, you know, a few of them expressed that so deeply that it made me think about What's your their catechesis yeah. Yeah. and how the discussion was being run in the confirmation classes or whatever things they go to the jesus explosion mm -hmm. or whatever because i must say i attended one of those and i'm not sure mm -hmm. that it allows a young person to feel god's love to feel like yeah. somebody loved by god you know what i mean and i think that's something we have to look at huh? father can you comment yes. on that briefly all right um yes i mean part of the uh, the problem throughout church history is um a over or over emphasis sometimes uh, on on sin and an under emphasis uh, on on God's grace uh, and God's mm -hmm. life and His love, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in our, in our, in our hearts. And um, the goal of theology, really, and the goal of spirituality, is to is, is to create a, a sense of balance, a bal balance in the lives of Catholics. Uh, that yes, uh, we have to account for sin, uh, we have to take mm -hmm. responsibility for sin, but we also have to acknowledge and recognize that we are loved unconditionally by God. Um, one of the things when we talk about voice, uh, mm -hmm. authentic voice, uh, mm -hmm. and probably um, inauthentic voice, uh, mm -hmm. to, to use that expression, um, sometimes um, you may have found in, in the essays, if an adult was mm -hmm. helping yeah. a child to write the essay, what would have come true is your unworthiness because of mm. your behavior at home, <laughs> <laughs> because of your bad behavior at school. Um, because there are, there are parents who would actively discourage their, their son or their daughter mm -hmm. to consider religious life or priesthood because you're too bad. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, your audience got that? That, that, <laughs> and, and that is, uh, that is, is uh, a, a don't number one yes. with respect to um, fostering vocations in the home. Nobody is worthy. Nobody is worthy. Mm -hmm. um, and we, and, and the, we, we have to work towards uh, um, encouraging people um, towards a vocation, mm -hmm. not looking first at, uh, at your worthiness or on your unworthiness, you know. 
but looking at the call of God upon your heart. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you so much mm -hmm. for sharing that, Father. You know, um, Father and I, we're just with the with regard. Thank you with the essay competition. Father <laughs> and I, and a team of us, I should say, went to the schools. Yeah. Right. Okay. So when we went, when we went to the schools, Father. Can you just share? Because Father says it's a lot better than me. Because when, when we went, Father and I were walking back, and he was like, oh my gosh, but I'm going to let him uh -huh. share it with you. Please share with the audience I think what that I, was like, what the, okay. what the first place the, for now. Okay. Um, okay, so we went to Presentation College, uh, Shogunas, and the winner um, is Spencer Sant. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, when we walked in the auditorium, it was uh, it's electrifying. Yes electrifying from the point of view of the support that his fellow students, his schoolmates gave to him having won the, the essay competition. Now, Presentation College has a culture family. Mm -hmm. So when you're a press boy and a press man, as <laughs> they say, there's a whole dynamic around that. Mm -hmm. But what was instructive for me in the whole thing is that it was a religious topic mm -hmm. and, and still it was welcomed. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he won an a, a, a essay competition um, speaking about religious themes was, um, was delightful. It, it was hopeful that teenage, teenage young fellows could have applauded him in the way. I had to make a, a, a joke saying that he could be the next um, prime, minister. prime minister or <laughs> mayor of, uh, of Shogunasa. Yeah, it, oh, my goodness. It, it was really well, you really received. Yes. Um, and again, we can't judge um, teenagers no. mm -hmm. with respect to their openness to God and spirituality right. and religion. Yeah. At Providence School, um, Kyla Mader, she mm. um, won this, the second, um, second prize. And there was, a, 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 again, an open atmosphere. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it was not as boisterous as, as, right. as presentation. It was not. But it was a sense of... Uh, of, uh, of openness mm -hmm. and uh, um, congratulations to, to Kyla and uh, I really, Santa. really felt positive about both experience. They were different experiences, yes, yes. They were. Um, but yes. really, really positive. Yeah. Well, um, yes, but I remember, I remember I was going with Father and I'm thinking, in my, I'm thinking in my head, you know, me and Father, I'm like, what if this boy or this little girl is embarrassed? You know, what if we go there and, you know, they're feeling shy? Mm. Like, I was like, okay, I didn't know what to expect because this was the first time we were going to do something yeah. like this. But we said, you know what, it's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. And we're just going to, we're going big or we're going home, yes. right? And when we got into Providence, everybody assembled in the hall. And Father, I know Father was quaking a little bit there <laughs> because he was giving my dad, look, me and Sister Philip. And, but everybody assembled, and when Father particularly pulled out the essay competition and said what the theme was, and you know, these um, winners, they were given really good gifts. When Father said what they were, the <laughs> whole school, the whole Providence school was up and up, was in uproar. <laughs> and Father was like, but we told you all about the essay competition, and we told, and I, everybody started applauding. It was really some, I was out of this world. And afterwards, people came to me and said, when is the next essay competition? Mm. When is it, what is the topic? This, we we yes. want to start a plan, yes. and this, that, and the other. And I think yes. you forgot one important part about Providence. Mm -hmm. When Father asked how many of them were considering religious life or they consecrated, okay. we had hands in the crowd. Yeah, Young women had hands in the crowd, yeah. and there was a particular girl who wanted to speak to me after, but I think her shyness got over. Oh. took her over and she didn't but don't worry everybody on a journey yeah of course so of she course. would be on hers but yes. providence was good but presentation it was yes. like somebody yeah. was performing well i can yeah. say something about presentation yes. Shagonas, because recently i was on the judging panel for the junior achievement leadership debate series mm -hmm. and they fielded teams that were so they won mm -hmm. i think yes Mm -hmm. that were very articulate, you know, strong ideas. They are very much into research. So, and, and the debate encourages that also. Yeah. So I'm not surprised that the winner is from presentation, Shogunas. Yeah. And that, you know, I can now, reflecting on, I think, his particular submission, I can understand now why there was so much to it 
that made you feel good about the education system. Yes. That here's somebody who's in the system and who is following, you know, who obviously has been exposed to how writing should occur and what it should look like. Yes. And, and, and so that is very good there. I like that. The energy mm -hmm. in that school, you cannot explain. It was like everybody was behind him. Like the entire school supported yes. him. Yes. And I think, it was like I think that. that's what carry young people. When it says, you know, you're supported by your mm -hmm. peers. Mm -hmm. And they just, they looked at him like, you know, they were proud. Yes. It was a very proud moment. And I was very impressed by the school. And I was thinking to myself, if other young people could feel this type of support, yeah. the kind of you know, the dynamic yes. that we will accomplish. That is why, despite what I have said about mm -hmm. the process, it would, it would be good to hear from them. Let's say the two winning essays, the writers, it would be good to hear from them what their process was. Yes. How did they arrive at this final product? Yeah. Because that will also now motivate those who are interested in entering the composition, the contest later on. Mm -hmm. You know, I always think about my own experience years ago the U.S. Embassy brought down Jamaica Kincaid. Mm -hmm. This would have been sometime in the 80s, I think, the early 80s. And I went because I'd read her book. And I was surprised to see the writer. The writer did not look like her words. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. so she was, in fact, she was very introverted and so. And then she spoke about her writing process. And it is important because when you hear about the writing process from renowned authors and writers, it helps to validate some of the things that you're going through. Look at Walcott. Walcott was clear. You know, his writing process is like a ritual. Mm -hmm. You have to have this. And this is important. I started to reflect on my own way of writing. When I have to write, mm -hmm. you know, you try to want to not want things around you. Yeah. <laughs> you clear the space. Yeah. You know, and like Father said, the idea comes at two in the morning and you jump up and you write it and you know if you don't write it it might just disappear from you so you keep a book for yes. your 2 a.m jotting oh, oh okay so that's what <laughs> to father reflect have on that. Maybe, maybe 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 but you know hopefully with the two um essays that were written mm -hmm. maybe we could think about you know giving other people the audience an opportunity to read i mean of course you would have to get permission from the actual writers yes. themselves because yes. you know yes people reviewed it but you know yes. sometimes that's personal and you don't want to you know we want to respect the writers and their professional work so <laughs> if they give us the okay yes. we'll be able to publish on our Facebook page and of course through email and um, different mediums their um, submission because from what Dr. Walker is telling me here and Father Matthew <laughs> it is something that I don't think we should keep secret so keep to no. pray <laughs> that Spencer and Kyla feel inspired and motivated to let their work be seen work. by to share by others. Yes. yes. Well, let me just give you the sure, no criteria we use for the shortlist yes, of please. 21. That would remember? be great. There were 49 submissions. Mm -hmm. These were blind review. They, but the whole thing was blind review, really. Mm -hmm. Read them, and 21 emerged from that 49. Right. Okay. The criteria for that first election was simply that the essay display and develop the required topic focus and adhere to the required length. Okay, yes, right? they had a particular word limit. That's yes. right, 750 the words. words. Yes. Some put their words count at the end, 697, or whatever what? others left it up to you to sort of <laughs> guess. <laughs> the shortlist of 21 was then evaluated according to the following criteria. Correct topic title, you got five points for that. Oh. But that is important. Yeah, you're working with a topic. Yes. Captivating beginning. Five points. Now, in school, you are taught your, your introduction must be something to capture your reader's attention, you know, and some strategies that you can use a quotation, you can use whatever. So, however, they use that, but the beginning was important. Holds interest throughout. Yes. Now, this is where, like, your errors in language and so would create a problem, mm -hmm. you know. Some people actually spell God with a lowercase g. You know, okay. so things like that. Very these. particular, yes, yeah. I like it a lot. And completeness at the end. So having read the essay, it must be a fulfilling experience. You must know, you mustn't have, well, what yeah. next? What, 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 what you know? there, yeah. yeah, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> that feeling of incompleteness must not exist. So that was 25 points. Wow. That process yielded six that were unanimous among the panel. So all of us chose that six. 
and which became the final list from which the top two were chosen, chosen. according to the following. Now, this is where we brought in voice. So, voice, 10 points. Content, 10 points. Remember, it's about if God called me. So, yes. to what extent are you exploring this whole idea? Yeah. Where is this? And then the total appeal, five points. So, that was 125 five. points. And in terms of the essays that won, they both had captivating beginnings. Mm -hmm. in, um, the first one had the interesting analogy for the call. He had an authentic voice. The essay was developed clearly and completely credible, well-constructed writing. Mm, I could imagine. And the second one also had well-constructed writing, very important voice, coherent development. They were very close. Okay. Maybe father should not have said one and two should be one, one. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, okay, okay. <laughs> two winners, two, two winners, winners, you know, and I'm happy to not to be a young man and a young yes, woman. So, so. Yes. You know, yes. there's some kind of gender equity in these yeah. <laughs> But All thank right. you, Dr. Walker, for sharing yes. that. I, I can really appreciate the professionalism of you and your team. I can really appreciate the fact that there was a point system because, yes. you know, a lot of times people feel like, okay, where's the idea of fairness? Yeah. But no, as our no, viewers can see fair. and our viewers tuning in, you can spread yeah. the word that the <laughs> persons that were selected, as you can see, it was a fair process there was a point system there was an elimination process it was a blind review it was a blind review and yes. there were cr criteria that was used yeah. that we you know we didn't just say okay great no yes. this was something that was well yes. thought out and once again father matthew and dr um walker you know thank you for the great initiative no. you know it's it was very well thought out and this speaks a lot for both of our guests tonight that whatever generation as does has to be top about notch. top notch, about <laughs> particular standard. Yeah. So before we um, now we spoke about the winners, we spoke about what we looked at, we spoke about we spoke about the experience that we had going to the schools and stuff like that. Um, can you just share individually, because I would like to use this to at least make a, a message and put it out. Um, if Father Matthew, can you share a special message for the um, participants of the essay competition. Can you just share with them a special message? My special message for the participants begins with my own sense of gratitude to, mm -hmm. to, to them. Um, they took time to write the essay. They took time to, to reflect, to enter the competition. Um, so I want to say thanks to the 49 young people who took part in it. Um, I also want to say to them, uh, remain open. Mm -hmm. Remain open to what God uh, will be doing in their lives, uh, um, be it the, if they're called to, the, to, to single life, married life, or life as a lay consecrated or religious or a priest. Uh, um, just remain open to, to that. Um, I think that openness uh, is necessary for their own development, mm -hmm. um, the spiritual development and the development of people. Um, because sometimes when we when we are closed, we missed we, we, we miss opportunities in terms of closeness. So that's my message. Thank you, Father. And Dr. Walker, can you please share a special message for those who participated in the essay competition? Yes. Well, like Father, I also want to thank them for you know daring to write, daring yes. to express their most intimate sense of the relationship with God and this. And I also want to thank the parents, the guardians, whoever supported them in this, maybe their friends, you know, because um, I think it would be a minority who would have just held it to themselves. You know, more often than not, they would have shared it with others. So I would want to also thank those people and ask them to continue to support young people in their journey in their spiritual development, their journey towards God. You know, above all, you know, I would like to say to Father Matthew, you know, continue your, <laughs> your journey with the vocation, um, mm -hmm. the whole idea of vocation in our archdiocese, you know. Um, there's sometimes there are so many mixed messages, you're not sure, but I think now, over the past year or two, so we have seen a clear thing emerging about it. Um, I was... One, my one disappointment was not seeing any reference to like the vocations cup in the home, mm -hmm. 
Right. Because at Santa Rosa, I witnessed that so often where families come up and take this vocations cup, and I'm thinking that must mean something. And I have told myself, you know, I will play a greater role in my parish in encouraging young people to really be part of competitions like these, you know, to write. I didn't do it this wrong stuff. So I mean, I've, so I could have felt good as a moderator. I was not involved mm -hmm. in giving anybody any ideas. But I would think that this is something that parishes will want to consider to really motivate young people to write. In fact, as part of confirmation, they should have a journal. Yes. <laughs> because you just never know what's happening. You just never, you just know. never know. But you know, the idea of allowing your thoughts to be expressed in writing clarifies it for you. Yes. Writing is a very important process. I it's think all about language and the word. Yes. I think this essay competition kind of, I think we did not expect for it to become such a revolution. Like, it was oh, an essay yes. competition, but it I think you. it surprised us. And it shows us that, one, that there are many talented young people out there. Two, they're looking for opportunities to use these talents. Mm -hmm. And three, you know, if you give them that opportunity, they will go with it. Once you, you know, motivate them and they support them, I think they, they're up and they're ready to go with it. And I'm so glad, you know, you thank, you know, the parents and whoever will help them or let's just say, you know, give them. Say, this is an essay competition. Yes. Would you like to participate? Yeah. Because that's all it takes, you know. Yeah. As Father always says, you're planting a seed. Yeah. Yes, correct. As he always says, you're planting a seed. And that's all you need to do. Plant the seed and water it. And let young people allow themselves to be whatever they want to be. You know, just give them the opportunity to do yes. so. Yes. So, for, well, we know that this is not the only essay mm -hmm. competition. Father, I hope you know that. Uh, Generation <laughs> S Committee, PBCs, all you all out there that support vocations. This is not the only essay competition. Can we look forward to another essay competition, maybe? We can look Next forward year. to another essay competition, <laughs> but... Uh, in terms of the two o'clock ideas, <laughs> um, there's one thing that I've been mulling around in my heart and my mind over the past year or so, but we have so much to do. Um, we, can't, we can't do everything in one year or two years or three years. Rome wasn't built in a day. Nope. Mm. Um, I've been thinking of uh, something along the lines of, of vocation on canvas, oh. of really getting um, our art students. Wonderful. Um, standard four, uh, not standard four, form four, form five, mm -hmm. lower six, upper six, um, to to really put vocation stories on uh, on canvas, um, be it uh, be it uh, um, pastel, be it uh, be it painting, mm -hmm. be it um, sketch, sketch um, and see what comes of that, because the church has always been a patron of the arts mm -hmm. historically. Um, the beautiful cathedrals of, 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 of Europe, um, mm. music, universities. Um, if we look at the history of universities, history of art, the history of, 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 of literature and, and things that create a human flourishing, mm -hmm. the, the church has been behind that, a motivating mm -hmm. force. Um, and so that, that is what we can look forward to in Generation S, either in 2018 <laughs> or 2019. Um, so, yes, vocation on art, vocation on, on canvas. Okay, that's quite yeah. an interesting. I actually, okay. I'm hearing this for the first time. And the team is hearing this for the first time, guys. But you did, you did, uh, you did ask me, um, so, what next? I mean, I have to admit yeah. that I'm really excited about this one. I True. am because I love art. Like, I love, you know, you never know what young people have until you ask them to do it. But I am excited about what we, are, what we will receive and what people are thinking because art is a great way to express besides writing, express. Because some people can't, you know, they can't express themselves, but they could draw and they could paint precisely. and they could sculpt something. But I think this is a great way for them to express, you know, whatever theme we come up for, for vocations on canvas. And it's also a way like of it. touching and expressing the sublime. Yes. You know what I mean? This is a very important dimension of humanity. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, we all experience the sublime. We don't have words fit when we are very young. But, you know, this is where I guess school plays a very important part, the exposure 
to great works of art, whether it's in writing or painting or music, as the case might be. You know, so I think all of this, in a way, underpins a great plea for us in our schools, Catholic schools, the education system, to really develop the humanities. You know, these yes. are the things that really make us humane and bring out our civility, our ability to appreciate something that is good and worthwhile or something that touches us deeply, mm -hmm. you know? A simple thing like the lifting of the Eucharist is something I know that touches people. It certainly touches me, me too. you know? And I know as a child, I didn't actually have the words to express it. But in going through some of my things recently, I found out where as a 13-year-old, I registered <laughs> in, in a worldwide movement of the Blessed Sacrament. Yes. No, I mean, I was one of those who really wanted, I wanted to be a nun. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't happen, <laughs> but I'm saying maybe, you know, so these, in reading the essays, these are the things that came back to my mind. Yeah. It, it, it encouraged a lot of personal recollection, and it also did that in the members of my panel. Because believe it or not, I think that was God's way of getting us as adults now, mature adults, to really um, reflect and examine on our own journey yeah. and our own relationship, our relationship with him has emerged and, you know, inspire us really to be that salt and that change that he probably would like us to be in the future. Because I don't believe things like these happen by accident and because... I'm a strong believer in, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was with God. <laughs> <laughs> I really feel language, language contains everything, and this is why, you know, one of the reasons we have to tell young people to be mindful about language. Yes. What kind of language are we using, and yes. well, how are we using it to express? That's definitely mm -hmm. a powerful sharing. I feel like, you know, we could use that mm -hmm. for future things that we would like to, you know, in all the different programs that we have, we could use that message, Dr. Walker, because I think what you just expressed, what you just put into words, was what I was feeling in my heart. I don't know if you were feeling that, Father, but I felt yes, like yes, she sir. put into words what I was feeling in my heart, and I'm sure many other people are feeling in their, in their hearts as well, particularly watching the show tonight. You know, Generation S, as I've mentioned before, you know, I, uh, we feel very passionate about yes. Generation S. I think Father Matthew knows that. <laughs> and um, we try so many different things, and sometimes we have to ask ourselves, is this going to be a hit or miss? Is it going to work? Because with the essay competition, I thought to myself, I was like, whoa, how are we going to get people to do this, young people? <laughs> but clearly, we hit the ball way out of the park like mm -hmm. this was a six mm -hmm. like if this was cricket it was like out of the over yeah, because the boundary. It, it missed the boundary right correct me because i'm not a cricket person across the I, boundary. Across <laughs> the boundary. right but i think from hearing all of this and being yes. a part of it now and all the things that you're sharing i realize that we really we really accomplish a lot more than what we set out to and, that's and you know i think along with your panel and with the committee i think with the collaboration with collaboration, there's something beautiful, mm -hmm. and this is the beauty in collaboration. You know, when you put, great, when you put two people together with great ideas and yes. they're skilled, you have the opportunity to make something beautiful. And I think, Generation, as, as long as we continue to collaborate, young people will always find themselves here, yes. you know? Sure. So with me saying that, um, what else can we expect from Generation as for 2018, Father? Share with Dr. Rosanna. <laughs> Besides the, um, the, the, the vocation on canvas, um, we want to continue our normal assemblies, mm -hmm. um, be it with confirmation assembly, bringing confirmation students together um, on Republic Day. Yeah. Um, we also have a, a, a local vocations assembly, um, whereby we're going to bring together all the stakeholders, teachers, people in youth ministry, um, parents, uh, um, people who can influence and impact um, vocations, Catholic teachers. And that's carded for June the 19th yes. um, at Holy Faith Convent in Cuba. And right now we're in the process of writing catechists, writing school principals, 
um, vocations directors of the various religious congregations to really get an energy in the room, energy in the room for the kind of collaboration that, we, that is needed, that yes. is necessary. Um, because if the message of, of vocations culture is to take root and bear fruit, we need all hands on deck. We need families on deck, Catholic schools on deck. We need uh, um, youth groups on deck. We need um, catechism, confirmation, confirmation teachers, teachers um, yes. on, 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 all hands on deck. Because a culture is, is, is created when you have people buying in or embracing a particular idea or value system. Yes. Um, that's how cultures are created. Yes. And that is important mm -hmm. also, Father, because if we are to take the Archbishop's idea of seamless discipleship, now this was the theme for the Catechetical Conference um, September, last September, September 2017. And I think it's a very good idea. In fact, I see the things like the essay competition fitting into that. Because if you're speaking about seamless discipleship, just look at that adjective, seamless. There's no distinction between who I am as my family, who I am as part of the community, who I am as a student, a teacher, a nurse, whatever it is, and who I am in the church. Mm -hmm. It's still me, you know, and there's always the tendency exists for us to compartmentalize our lives, right? And it's only as life progresses and depending on who you associate with and what you hear that impacts you and you realize, but no, I'm one person. I have these different dimensions, yes, but it's one, one me. Yeah. So that the, I think what you're raising there is the really, assembly, yeah. yes, is really um, illuminating the idea that the discipleship has to be seamless. Yes. It may not be the way the Archbishop intended that I'm using <laughs> it, but I'm seeing it in that way, seamless meaning that, you know, the person therefore is able to live in the worldly dimension with their spiritual right. self, through sure. their spirituality, as the case might be. You know, because I think, I think it's a wonderful thing, you know, to get to that level where your faith is integral to what you do. Yes. You know, and I don't, we don't get there because of some paintbrush theory or something like that. Yes. But we get there, I think, when we begin to appreciate, understand, and believe what the concepts that are provided to us in the Catholic vision, you know, and I think I could say this, I think the Catholic vision Dr. Walker, is I am so sorry that I have to cut you. <laughs> I am so no sorry problem. because I feel like you're going to say something extremely <laughs> powerful, but we are down to one minute of the show and we actually have to close off. Yes. So maybe on another family life show, no problem. the Generation S, we could bring you yes. back on so you could continue sharing because what you have to say is completely enlightening and I'm very sorry I have to cut you. But let me just say I just my... I want to thank my panel, though. I didn't yes, do that. Yes, go ahead. So I want to thank Dr. Micheline Adams, Miss Lynette Tyson Noel, Sir Martin Jones, and Mr. Timmy Aberdeen. Thank you very for much. For willingly joining with us in this particular process. So I just want to say thank you to Father Matthew and thank you to Dr. Walker for joining us tonight. Viewers, we're sorry. We have to rush off the set, but please have a good night and enjoy the rest of your week. <laughs>